All right. In this video, we're going to discuss two Turkish handguns. The SAR-9, and I believe this is called a Platinum, not to be confused with the Platinum package, uh, because of the uh, finish. It's tungsten finish on there. And years ago I bought a Kanak, and this one here, the Kanak, it's the holster it comes with. It. I believe this is a TT9 or TP9, TP9 SF. There's all kinds of different models and versions offered by these companies. But I bought this thing years ago because uh, these Turkish guns don't really cost a ton of money and they kind of come in a nice little layout. So the one that I bought here, this SAR-9, uh, I got this just as an impulse buy. And I've been happy with the Kanak all these years. Uh, so we're going to discuss, you know, did I screw up? Maybe shouldn't have spent my money. Alright, so I did a video on an overview of this pistol here, the SAR-9. Now, the difference between this, uh, first thing, is the way this gun is. You only have 17 round magazines, where I believe with the Kanak, they are 18 rounds. Okay, so one round difference, whatever. And there are versions that have state compliant magazines that are smaller. But that's what we're looking. So these are full size guns, which 17, 18 round, these are full size pistols. Okay, now we did the overview, and uh, this here, if you go to other people's channels, they'll explain all this. This has a manual safety where the Canac does not have a manual safety on it. Now, some people don't like it. There's actually a guy that did a video where he removed this lever and put a pin in there or something, you know, whatever. So, both guns come with two mags. Okay, let's talk about what you get. Both guns come with two magazines, okay? Both come, guns come with these little cleaning kits over here and there, the manual, two mags, uh, and then the grip panels on this, if you refer, refer to the other videos, uh, three-piece grip panels, three sizes. With the uh, Kanak, one back strap is removable, nothing else. So one piece, and you only have two, large and small. Okay, so you only get the one back strap, not the panels and everything kind of like this. I forget what one guy said, there's just mix and match, there's 19 different ways you can put it in there. And you get a punch, and then here, I didn't notice it for years, but in this little bag is a punch. And both of these guns are about the same price. They're still available, this is still available, they're about the same price. Uh, but, now, what you get with the Kanak, okay, is you get a paddle mag, this is, this is how it comes, and once you assemble it, here's the back of it, and you got this uh, paddle holster, and this holster locks in there, so that's with the Kanak Extra, and you get a magazine loader with the Kanak which you have to buy, the SARs, you have to buy a more fancier model will come with accessories and cost more. And like I said, these two things as is, it's about a $400 gun, okay? It might vary, but it's under five, but I'd say around 400. So the Canon Act, you're getting a little bit more for your money. Two mags, a holster, a mag loader, but it doesn't have the intricate grip panel, okay? So, what else is different? 
Now, with this pistol here, the SAR9, uh, one thing I didn't point out, you can see on the trigger there's a little red indicator that the trigger is cocked. Both guns are striker fired single action. In other words, once you pull the trigger, uh, you don't get a reset or you don't, you can't double strike. Some striker guns you can keep pulling if you have a misfire. Uh, so that is one thing there that, that tr and the trigger stays back. Okay. Where on this, trigger's a little bit different. There is no indicator. When you fire it, again, single action, the trigger goes out. It doesn't stay back. Okay. So it's a little bit different trigger. Uh, both of them, I believe, have a loaded chamber indicator with the extractors. I believe the CANAC does too. But, and like I said, this one doesn't have a manual safety. This one does. Three dot sights. Okay, both of them have three dot sights. The CANAC can be drifted. The front sight is in a dovetail. It can be drifted. So I believe this other one you can only adjust or drift the rear sight on. So that's the other big difference. Uh, and this has a Glock type striker where this has that uh, Walter style where that's a, the indicator when you see the little thing there you indicated, that's how you know that you're you got the striker compressed or ready to roll. Which this one here, it would be in the trigger. When you see the little red thing down in the trigger, you know that the striker is in the cocked position, I guess, or ready to fire. And so I said to myself, why did I get this gun? This gun kind of a little bit more compact. This one here is a little bit more bulkier. Okay. And I really like this pistol, and the reason I kept it all these years is it shot well. So when I took it out today, and also this pistol here, the Canac, it'll eat anything. Steel cases, I had some 9mm ammo, I kind of let the cast bullet, I had a cast bullet load where I kind of was oversized with it and it will not chamber in a lot of guns. The uh, SAR9 is one and it ate all the cast bullet loads. Okay, it won't, it wouldn't uh, chamber in some guns because, you know, the chamber's tight. This gun fired it, fired it all accurately. And actually, until I expend that ammo, uh, this is the only gun in a work in that I have. Uh, no holster with this one and this uh, paddle holster that came here. I did a thing where I wore it for a day and everything. The holster, you know, for being free or included, it works quite well. It, it does lock the gun in uh, to it. You have to trip that to get it out. It hasn't really affected the wear of the pistol much. A lot of these uh, plastic holsters will wear the guns, but um, I haven't used it that much, but it, it's comfortable and it's functional and it works well. You know, it's not a concealed carry holster. The holster's on the outside of your hip, but uh, it's nice to have that little added accessory included in the package. So how do they shoot? Well, <laughs> I'm going to have to tell you, uh, I took them out side by side and I went to shoot them and I was going to decide if this one, you know, was more comfortable, shot better and I can control it better, uh, I was going to think about selling this gun. Well, like I said, first thing, this pistol, this Canac, will eat any ammunition. Okay, where a lot of guns are picky and finicky like this one, and it didn't like to cast bullets at all. Okay, and all I had was a big stock of cast bullets and some jacketed hollow points. So I dug out my jacketed hollow point reloads, 
and the gun, this gun did handle it well. There were zero malfunctions, misfeeds, anything with this gun, irregardless what ammo you put in it. This gun is a little bit more sensitive. It didn't like some of the ammo. And actually is a control. I had this Beretta uh, M51. And one of the cast bullets, the Beretta, would shoot. And there was another one. It's a different shape. Uh, the Beretta didn't like it. So the Beretta took the one bullet that wouldn't function in this gun. So goes to show you there. So the results. I brought some targets and we'll put them up against the targets and then you can look at it. Okay, and this was fired at 10 yards. Okay. We got the SAR9 and as you can see eh, that's what the results we got with that gun. Now with the Canac, the group was a little bit tighter. They're both spread out. Both of them get out into the sevens uh, ring. But I had more, con the Canac was just more accurate. Okay. And, you know, I thought I did better with the Canac than I did with this one. But to be fair, I came home and like I said, I'm going to change the grips and go out again and try this again just to make sure it wasn't me or something like that and use some different ammo. I did use pretty uh, problematic ammunition um, and that's why I do it. A lot of people, oh, why are you using, you know, because this gun functions 100% with it. I was banging steel targets and everything with them cast bullets. So that's the way it goes. But in my opinion, the Canac kind of did them out today. Uh, and looking at the little extras you get in there, a holster and a mag loader. Um, you know, I'm going to have to say today, the Canac came on top and the uh, SAR-9 did not. Also, they said because this gun has a solid chassis for the mechanism in the frame. In other words, there's a solid piece of metal where this one I went and looked at it quite does not. Uh, they said, well, this would enhance it. It would last longer and make it more accurate and stable. Well, the way it looks to me, uh, that didn't happen. So, you can be the judge. Those are the targets. There's a better look at it. I still say the Canac was a tighter group. Um, I changed the grips on this to a different size. And I'll try it again with a different ammo that works a little bit better in the guns. Maybe a little bit more variety of ammo. I have some uh, 147 grains, 125 and some other stuff. We'll give it another whirl. But so far, that's the results I got with the comparison.